Anakin Skywalker's fall from heroic Jedi Knight to the Sith Lord Darth Vader during the time of the Clone Wars is of central importance to both the prequel and original trilogies. But Anakin Skywalker was not the only Jedi who was seduced by the dark side of the Force during the Clone Wars. Remember the Clone Wars era? From the vantage point of the Force Awakens, one may almost come to think of the Clone Wars as the good old days. And boy, don't I favorably remember the good old days when everything seemed to make sense. <laughs> In this video expose, I will discuss three Jedi, including two Jedi Masters, who fell to the dark side during the time of the Clone Wars. Right up front, I'll note that Anakin Skywalker is not on the list for the simple reason that as a non-canon expert, that would be all too easy. Besides, I'm fairly certain that we're all well aware of that story at this point. The first member of our list of Jedi who fell to the dark side during the time of the Clone Wars is Pong Krell. Pong Krell was a male basilisk who rose to the rank of Jedi Master by the time of the Clone Wars. His physical makeup, consisting of four arms, allowed him to implement and utilize a unique form of the Jakar style of lightsaber combat wherein he wielded two double-bladed lightsabers. Needless to say, this made Krell a particularly powerful and frightful lightsaber duelist particularly when this is coupled with the fact that he was agile in combat despite his large size. Pong Krell was also skilled in his use of the Force, as he was able to utilize powerful Force repulses and Force jumps, and exhibited exceptionally strong telepathic skills by successfully getting into the heads of his opponents to confuse them and sense their emotions. Most importantly in regards to Krell's fall to the dark side, he also had the powerful ability to foresee events taking place in the future. During the Clone Wars, Pong Krell served as a Jedi General in the Grand Army of the Republic and was recognized as a hero of the war through his success. He was known for implementing tactics that were relentless in their pursuit of victory at any and all costs. Perhaps because of these tactics, Krell did not accept insubordination and required the clone troopers under his command to absolutely adhere to his orders. As the Clone Wars continued on, Pong Krell's fall to the dark side began when he foresaw the destruction of both the Jedi Order and the Republic, in addition to the rise of a new power that would come to replace them. Out of selfishness and a desire for self-preservation, Krell chose to immerse and pledge himself to the dark side of the Force, thereby becoming a traitor to the Republic and positioning himself as a servant and disciple of Count Dooku. Krell's fall to the dark side also coincided with his own increased lust for power. Because of these visions, Krell chose to ally himself with the dark side and hope to serve Count Dooku and join the Sith, which would provide him with a place in the new order to come. While Pong Krell was acting as interim general over the 501st Legion during Anakin Skywalker's absence in the Battle of Umbara, he was found out to be a traitor to the Republic by the clone troopers of the 501st under his command when it became clear that he was sabotaging the efforts of the Republic's campaign and secretly assisting the efforts of the Separatists. Krell was taken prisoner and ultimately executed by the clone trooper who had been his most loyal soldier up to that point, the aptly named Dogma. Next on our list of Jedi who fell to the dark side during the time of the Clone Wars is Barriss Afi. Barriss Afi was a female Mary Allen who was a Jedi Padawan during the time of the Clone Wars under Jedi Master Luminara Unduli. She was skilled as a Jedi healer and utilized strong skills using telekinesis, as she was able to use the Force to prevent a cave's roof from falling down upon her and her master, and could also move large objects with the Force. Further, Barriss displayed excellent abilities as a lightsaber duelist, showing that she was skilled enough to survive the Battle of Geonosis. As a Padawan under Master Luminara, Barriss Afi had a fairly significant role prior to and during the Clone Wars. She was able to sit in on high-level meetings between the Jedi Council and Supreme Chancellor Palpatine to discuss the secessionist movement and the possibility that the conflict could turn into full-out galactic war. 
She was also a part of the Jedi Assault Team sent to Geonosis to rescue Padme, Obi-Wan, and Anakin. Further, she directly took part in a number of military engagements during the Clone Wars, including the Second Battle of Geonosis and the Battle of Umbara. Barriss Offee's fall to the dark side of the Force began as she grew more and more disillusioned with the role of the Jedi in the Clone Wars as the conflict continued on. She came to the view that the Jedi's role in the war, as well as their overall role in the galaxy, was a clear representation that the Jedi Order had lost its way from the ideals that they were supposed to represent, wherein these ideals became distorted. Barriss became particularly wary and skeptical of the actions of the Jedi Council. All of this culminated with Barriss concluding that the Jedi were the ones who were responsible for the Clone Wars, and that they occupied the role of the villains in the conflict due to the fact that the Jedi Council only believed in violence. As these views solidified and took hold of Barriss Afi, she became corrupted by the dark side, and tragically, became the very thing that she was attempting to fight and prevent with regard to the Jedi Order. Looking to act upon her concerns with the Jedi Order, and while under the seduction of the Dark Side, she decided to put a plot into motion for bombing the Jedi Temple in order to create and sow further distrust of the Jedi. Successful in her plan, Barriss's bombing of the Jedi Temple resulted in the death of a number of clone troopers, six Jedi, and multiple civilian maintenance crew members. As further evidence that Barriss had fallen to the dark side, she ended up force choking her co-conspirator, killing her in her prison cell after she was apprehended in order to prevent her from revealing her role in the bombing to the Jedi. Further, Barriss's bombing of the Jedi Temple is important for the reason that it resulted in Anakin Skywalker's Padawan, Ahsoka Tano, being blamed for the bombing and being expelled from the Jedi Order. Ultimately, Anakin was able to reveal that it was Barriss who was behind the bombing, which she admitted to at Ahsoka's trial, and Barriss was subsequently arrested and taken away for her actions. The third and final Jedi on our list of Jedi who fell to the dark side during the time of the Clone Wars is Quinlan Vos. Quinlan Vos was a human male from the planet of Kifu, who ascended to the rank of Jedi Master during the Clone Wars. Due to his actions both prior to and during the Clone Wars, Voss had developed a reputation as a Jedi who bended the rules and was viewed as a nonconformist. Quinlan Voss was known for his powerful ability of psychometry, which is the ability to perceive memories that others had simply by touching objects these individuals had also come into contact with. As an expert tracker, Voss utilized these skills greatly when undertaking missions involving the criminal elements within the galaxy. Voss also had strong telekinetic powers, as he was able to levitate both people and objects using the Force. Quinlan Voss took part in a number of important missions during the Clone Wars, including the time he teamed up with Obi-Wan to track Zero the Hutt, a Hutt crime lord, when he escaped from a prison on Coruscant. However, none were more important than his part in the secret mission to assassinate Count Dooku in order to bring a swift end to the Clone Wars. As part of this mission, the Jedi Council recommended that he partner with Asajj Ventress, who had once been Count Dooku's dark side acolyte and assassin before she was cast aside and whom Dooku attempted to murder at the behest of his own master, Darth Sidious. The Jedi Council's logic in this recommendation to Voss was to attempt to bring the light and dark sides of the Force together to kill Count Dooku. Voss accepted the Council's recommendation and created a partnership with Ventress, wherein she accepted to aid him in Dooku's assassination. It was in this partnership with Asajj Ventress where Quinlan Voss fell to the dark side of the Force, as he came to accept from Ventress that he'd have to utilize the dark side in order to succeed in the assassination mission. On the planet of Dathomir, Ventress guided Voss in the teachings of the dark side and pushed him towards embracing his hatred. After Voss completed his dark side training under Ventress, they proceeded with their plan to assassinate Count Dooku. However, after Voss was overpowered by Count Dooku during their confrontation, he was taken prisoner by Dooku and subjected to long periods of torture and psychological manipulation. During his captivity, Dooku was able to break the bond that was created between Voss and Ventress, which had become romantic by that point, and Voss further succumbed to the dark side, agreeing to become Dooku's apprentice. 
It should be mentioned that Boss's primary motivation to join the Dark Side was to uncover Dooku's master, Darsidious, and destroy the two Sith. However, it mustn't be forgotten that during the time in which Boss was seduced by the Dark Side of the Force, he was complicit in the murder of his friend, Jedi Knight Akkar Deshu. Ultimately, when Count Dooku attempted to seize upon an opportunity to kill Voss and Ventress, Ventress sacrificed herself to save Voss by diving in front of Dooku's force lightning that was intended for him, thereby saving her lover's life. After Voss attacked Dooku in a fit of passion and defeated him, he experienced a moment of clarity before killing Dooku and spared his life. However, after being captured by the forces of the Republic, Voss went in front of the Jedi Council and confessed that he had fallen to the dark side. However, Obi-Wan advocated that Voss be reinstated into the Jedi Order, having witnessed his actions of mercy in sparing Dooku and comforting the dying Ventress, and also because Obi-Wan admitted that the Jedi Council's decision to resort to assassination was a moral failing on their part. Quinlan Voss's reinstatement was granted to him, and he continued to lead the forces of the Grand Army of the Republic until the final days of the Clone Wars. There we have it. Three Jedi, not named Anakin, who fell to the dark side during the time of the Clone Wars. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions? Also, if you enjoyed the video, why not give a like, or leave a comment? If not for me... Ferletta Termond.